Let's get insights from the man with a lot of views. Jim Rogers, chairman of Rogers Holdings, is the author of A Gift to My Children, A Father's Lesson for Life and Investing, and A Bull in China. Good, Jim, always good to have you on the show. You know what? First of all, when, wow, what a huge bill. I then they went like, where's the money going to come from? Where's the beef? Your thoughts? I hope you said the same thing. I said, wait a minute, what's going on here? And I will have to tell you, I'm long the euro, not, not that I'm making any money. But I was stunned because this means that they've given up on the euro. They don't particularly care if they have a sound currency. You have all these countries spending money they don't have, and it's now going to continue. So I have to worry about the euro. I worry about all paper money, all paper money, but this is just another nail in the coffin. So why do you want to be long euro? That doesn't make sense. If fundamentals are not in place, and they won't be from the looks of it, they are still concerns. Risks uh, are bound. Husband, the, the, the fundamentals are terrible for all paper money, every currency. There are few. I mean, the, Singap the Singapore dollar is, is soundest of all, fun, uh, philosophically anyway. Canadian. There, there are some countries which are reasonably sound. The currencies are reasonably sound. But basically, all politicians in the world know how to buy votes now, and they're doing their best to buy votes. That's not good. Why do you think gold is going to the not going through the roof yet, but it's going up? Because other people understand what I understand. But having said that, there must be some upside to that one trillion dollar package. I mean, now the contagion seems to be pretty limited to within Europe, not the rest of the world. Yes, there's upside if you get the money. Somebody's going to get that trillion dollars, and the people who get that money are going to say, oh, this is wonderful, things are better, just like in America. Some people are getting the money now, and they think things are better, and they are better for them. But, Haas, this money's got to come from somewhere. You either have to print it or borrow it or tax it, and in the end, these guys who are putting up the money are going to say, things aren't better for me, and the currency is being debased everywhere. So what? What's going to happen to Spain and Portugal? How concerned are you about those two countries? I'm, I'm concerned about all countries, including the U.K., including the U.S. I mean, this, these are countries which have gigantic debts and gigantic deficits, and things are not getting better. Nothing about this new package is going to make anybody cut their deficits enough to solve the problem. Why do governments keep thinking that they can solve the debt issue with more capital? I understand the idea that you can solve a problem of too much debt and too much consumption with more debt and more consumption. Uh, can you believe that grown-ups would say something like that? I mean, it is mind-boggling to me that people who are supposedly educated really believe this, and they seem to. I think what they really know in their hearts is we're just going to put the problem off until I'm gone. And then the next guy will have to worry about it. And it's not going to help us, though. Okay, some people in the market think that perhaps the ECB is doing something right. It, it's come out to say it's going to buy, what, government and private debt. Do you Isn't think it, that's right? Do you think that's right? I mean, is there more I risk? Mean, that's, no, of course not. That's not helping. See, in fact, the, e, the EU, the European Union, says we, can't, we will not bail out people. They're bending their own rules. They're ignoring their own rules. They've been ignoring the Maastricht Treaty for about 15 years now. This is not, they're bending rules just like the Federal Reserve. And in the end, this is all, it's not our grandchildren. It's not our children who are going to pay for this, Oz. It's the present generation. It's all of us who are going to pay for this. Jim, all we were talking about how perhaps the EU is not taking the right steps. I mean, taking a look at the euro itself, I mean, it does seem like uh, there, is, there are some underlying uh, problems with the euro in itself. I mean, the problem, how do you coordinate fiscal policy, budgetary policy, and so on and so forth? I mean, it's, it's a difficult situation. Well, I doubt if the euro will be around in 10 years or 15 years. It's a political currency, and nobody's uh, minding the economics behind the, the necessity to have a, a strong currency. And unfortunately, I'm afraid it will dissolve. It's continuing to weaken from within. You see what they did o over the weekend. They t they're throwing more money at a problem, and it's going to make things worse down the road. This is debasing the euro, just as all other paper currencies are being debased. So the euro is a failed experiment 11 years on. Well, it hasn't failed yet. Obviously, it's still there, and I would hope that it succeeds. The world needs something to, to compete with the U.S. dollar, and the euro on paper would be perfect to compete with the dollar. Unfortunately, the practice is not nearly as, as successful as the theory, so be careful. Not too long ago, people were talking about the euro as a possible reserve currency. All gone down. Well, I just got through saying, as a theory, yes, it could be and should be the world's reserve currency. Unfortunately, I'm afraid it's going to, to break up. The politicians all over Europe are using the euro as a, as a scapegoat whenever there's a problem. And it's a political currency now. It is not a sound-based economic currency, and that cannot work. Given where the euro is right now and given where it's headed, do you think it will delay the China, China's move on the yuan? Well, from China's point of view, this is what's, what's happening. I mean, the, the renminbi is going up. 
the euro's going down. I mean, you, you don't hear the Europeans complaining anymore. They're very happy because the euro's going down a lot against the renminbi, and it's what they keep asking the Chinese to do. So from, from at the moment, anyway, the Europeans, which are a much larger market than the U.S., they're quite happy and quite pleased. Okay, a couple of questions from our viewers right now. Are all current countries, rather, going to abandon fiat and credit? and adapt gold standard. Your thoughts? Well, I doubt if there will be a gold standard anytime soon, but the way things are going, if and when we have our, our inflationary and our currency huge problems, then people are going to grab for something. Now, at the moment, the only thing I can see that they can grab for would be, would be gold or precious metals or a commodity-based currency. The renminbi someday, if it's 10 years from now, 15 years from now, but if we suddenly have a panic this fall or the fall of 2011, I'm afraid or I suspect people will grab for gold. I own gold, as, as you remember. And remember, silver. And silver. I own them both. Um, I don't think the gold standard would work. It never has worked. But sure, people may grab for it. You said that gold may hit through the roof. What levels are we looking at? Well, I've been on your show before explaining that gold will certainly go to 2000 by, by, by 2020. That's was, a 50% increase, by the way. Yeah, that's, not, that's not even that. It's less than that. It, it, well, it's more than 50% if you go from, from 1200. Uh, but that's not such a big move in eight years or 10 years. Uh, but I certainly expect that it could go much higher. I, I don't know. I'm not selling my gold for maybe forever. My children will own my gold, I suspect. So, to get the year, if there's one currency we may want to invest in, what's your currency of choice? Well, at the moment, I, my currencies of choice happen to be the U.S. dollar, the Swiss franc, and the Japanese yen. I don't expect the dollar to do well at all five years from now. In fact, it's, it's a disaster. But right now, I own it. I own the yen because the carry trades are unwinding. People are worried, and they're putting money, they're, they're withdrawing their money from risky assets. Let's get into specifics. We have a, a question from a viewer who wants to know, in the midterm, USD versus the euro. Your thoughts on that? Where is it headed? I want to know that too. I want to know it in the short term. You know, watch Bloomberg. You have guys on Bloomberg every day. We're who very smart. Who, who can answer those questions? I own the euro. I, I would have thought the euro would would have done better. There are huge short positions in the euro, but I'm I'm losing money. And I mean, I'm not making money in the euro. I should say. So I I'm not quite sure. This this new program coming out of Europe is disastrous for the euro, longer term, even medium term. But in the meantime, the, the euro's down a whole lot. That helps Europe trade-wise. You know, the Europeans are now much more competitive because they have a cheaper currency, and that's going to help in the, in the short to medium term. Is there a euro level that may make you consider buying into more euros? I have no idea right now. I'm trying to figure out what to do because, you know, I'm on the wrong foot. Uh, given that uh, I never expected Merkel to give in the way she gave in. I never expected some of the European Central Banks to do what they did. So she certainly caught me by surprise, if nothing else, and I'm now having to assess what to do with my position. I, I don't know. You can ask me tomorrow or next week or next month. I have no idea. You, you said earlier you're liking the dollar, at least for the moment. What indications are you looking out for, for you to be convinced that perhaps there's more upside for the dollar? Well, there were huge short positions in the dollar uh, last fall, which is why I went along with the dollar. Uh, there is a lot of problems with the, with the carry trade, and the carry trade is unwinding as people get scared. And some people are going into the dollar because they don't know what else to do. Um, the dollar is a terribly, terribly flawed currency. It doesn't have a great future in. I, I'm trying to explain to you. I'm trying to figure out what, what sound paper money there is. There may be a time when all we can do is put our money into real assets because paper money everywhere is being debased. I spoke in Prague last fall to a group of like 300 big-time money managers from all over the world, and the moderator said, how many of you have ever owned gold? 76% of the people had never owned gold in their lives. I mean, I almost fell off the, off the stage. So that means, you know, there's a huge potential yet left of people who've never owned gold, who've never owned real assets. And tr traditionally, that's the way to protect yourself when currencies are being uh, debased. That's not the way it is in, uh, in China or India. A lot of people own gold uh, in a those lot of countries. People, I so. suspect even in China and India, more than 76% have never owned gold. Yes, you're right, in India, many people own gold. But in China, most people have never owned gold, not yet. They weren't able to own gold for decades, but now, now they can. How vulnerable are Asian currencies to the fallout in the EU? Well, I'd rather own Asian currencies than, than Western currencies for the most part because 
you know, the, the creditor nations in the world are all in Asia. China, Korea, Japan, Tokyo, I mean, uh, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Singapore. This is where the assets are. Most Asian nations have saved up for a rainy day, and well, and now it's raining. And they've got assets to help themselves. So I'd rather be here than, than in the West for the most part. You know, there's, there's, um, there's a question from a viewer right here, Jim. He says, if fiat money is worthless, inflation at 10%, and interest rate is at 17 why do we want to own gold? What else are you going to own? I mean, you can own zinc, you can own cotton, you can own natural gas, you can own real assets, but shares are not going to do well for you. Property is not going to do well for you because interest rates are going to go through the roof. You got to own something. Paper money is being debased. You know, there's a lot of skepticism about real assets, about gold. You, there's a prominent economist that some people listen to. I don't, but he said it is utter nonsense that gold can make two thousand dollars an ounce by the year 2020. There's that kind of skepticism out there about real assets. And if all paper money is going to come under under attack. You've got to own real assets. That, for thousands of years, has been the way to protect yourself.